Our scripture reading this morning is Psalm 103, verses 1 through 13. Listen for God's word. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you join your hearts with me in prayer? Holy wisdom, holy word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be holy and pleasing to you. May we take only your truth from this place. Amen. Last week, Pastor Dave gave a wonderful sermon on Willow Creek's 175-year-old history and how rooted this church is in the ministry and teaching of Christ a wise and generous sermon to set the stage for the next pastor to come and talk about the next 175 years. But I have to tell you, if 2020 has taught me anything, it's that I certainly cannot predict the next year, much less the next decade or century. There is much that I don't know about our future together. But there are some things that I do know will be true today and tomorrow for many tomorrows. And these truths are found in today's Psalm. I know that while you and I may essentially be strangers today, we hold this in common. We are compelled to bless the Lord, to worship, to exhale exaltation as we consider the many blessings God has given us even in the midst of uncertainty. I don't know what all y'all have been through these last six months or so as we've experienced the interruptions of COVID, and I do look forward to hearing your stories. But I know this, even in a season when many are lamenting, when will it all be over? How much more can we take? Y'all have chosen to show up again this Sunday morning and bless the Lord's holy name. Y'all have chosen to lift your souls and open your hearts in worship once again, trusting God in a season when it could be tempting to say, it seems that God has forgotten about us. But we, like the psalmist, reject that our God could forget us and instead find joy listing the way God shows us that we are remembered and we are loved. So while I may not know all of the details of what our future together holds, I know it will contain many moments in Willow Creek's beautiful sanctuary, many moments praising and blessing God together, borrowing one another's faith when our own feels frail, finding encouragement from one another and the one who calls us all together. This church has a heritage of showing up and worshiping God through all of life's joys and challenges. And that, that is a heritage I know we will continue together. And here's something else I know for today and tomorrow. God is the one who forgives. Of all the things I may not know about our future together, I can safely predict this. I will need God's forgiveness, and you will too. And we will need to practice that forgiveness with one another. Most of the time, we'll get along just fine. We will also sometimes not 
get along just fine. I may have some different ideas about how to do things. We might nudge just a bit at the edges of the way things have always been done. In our ministry together, we might try some things y'all have never considered before. And I hope we try some things I've never considered before. And some of those things will be shockingly successful. And some of them will not be. We will need forgiveness from God and from one another. And today's psalm reminds us of this core truth of our identity as God's beloved children. That we are forgiven by a God who is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. This truth is the bedrock of our freedom. In the coming weeks as we get to know each other, as I learn about the past and we dream together about the present and future, we are free from having to convince one another of our goodness or our profoundness or our perfection. We are going to learn sooner or later one another's imperfections. And that is okay, because as Christians, we do not hide from our flaws, but instead recognize them as another portal to worship, another beginning of the declaration, bless the Lord, O my soul. Here's something else I know for today and tomorrow. God is the one who heals all of our diseases, all of our diseases. At this point in the time of Corona, I am very ready for God to show up and heal this disease. It would be easier to preach this if it were a metaphor, because then it would be easier for me to believe. But I don't think the psalmist means it as a metaphor. I know that in the promise of resurrection, in the promise that death has lost its sting, disease is healed when our bodies have completed their suffering and we are in God's holy presence. But I'm also not sure that that's what the psalmist means. And to be frank, in a year marked with sickness, death, and grief, I think that's letting God off the hook just a little bit. I think the psalmist means simply that God is the healer of all diseases. And I want to believe that. And I want you to help me believe that. And I want to help you believe when you need that help. That is something else that our future will hold. Those moments when we hold one another's faith for one another. Regardless of which one of us is the pastor, I need that just as much as anybody else. My role in the church is not to pretend to not have doubts. I'm not here to pretend I don't have questions about God. Questions like, don't you see this suffering down here? Where are you, God? Why haven't you healed this yet, you healer of all diseases? It's not faithless to ask the questions. And sometimes what we need is someone else hearing us, wondering where God is and saying, I think I see a glimpse of healing, a glimmer of hope. In the way two strangers share kindness, in the sound of a child's laughter, in the peace of my mother's smile, in the beauty of this field and the blue of the sky and the gift of the rain. Those faithful reminders will also be our future. We'll ask each other, where have you seen God healing diseases? Because I need to remember that God is able to heal all of this. And we will answer each other again and again and again. Certainly COVID has impacted this pastoral search from the fact that I'm not even in the same time zone, much less same sanctuary as you this morning, to the amazing creativity, courage, and hospitality your wonderful pastoral nominating committee has shown throughout this pandemic version of the call process. I am grateful for each member of the PNC and the ways they've reached out to my husband and me through Zoom, doing all manner of things new including an HGTV-inspired virtual manse tour. In the midst of circumstances we would not have chosen, it has been amazing to feel the Spirit of God move, even through Zoom. From the very first conversation where I learned what handballs are, to today's virtual candidating sermon and congregational meeting that is requiring a small army to make possible, 
I have learned that you are a church that is hospitable, kind, and rooted in tradition while open to the movement of the spirit of our living God, who is always making all things new. The promise that all things will be made new is something else I know for sure for today and tomorrow. Psalm 103 tells us that God is the one who satisfies us with good all the days of our life so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. I cannot wait to learn with you what that means for Willow Creek. What will it look like for a 175-year-old church to have its youth renewed as an eagles? It would be understandable if a nearly two-century-old church has some worn-out spots, some aches and pains here and there, if it's maybe not as nimble as it once was. That would be expected, natural, and absolutely acceptable. Some of those aches and pains are beloved quirks, and some of the old will always, always be with us. Some of the old is beloved memories of how God has loved this church and loved through this church for such a very long time. And that will not change. And there will be some new, too. New is inevitable. In Christ, we are always being made new. We as individuals and we the church. And so today, while I can't promise you exactly what the future is going to be like, while I may not know the details, I know this. God is the one who satisfies us with good as long as we live so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. That's a promise of soaring, of flying high and strong and not growing tired. It's also a promise that before all of that soaring is some trial and error. When eagles are learning to fly, they don't just hop up out of the nest and soar immediately. They practice close to the ground first. They build up their skill and endurance over time. It takes work, courage, and tenacity. But the young, both the actual young and also those whose youth is being renewed as the eagles, according to this promise, they have energy, heart, and willpower for that. So this promise of renewal of youth like an eagle's is a reminder of hope for the future. And it's also a reminder to look toward the young in our midst for cues on how the promise will come to fruition. What are our young people paying attention to? Where did they see God moving in the world? What questions do they have for the church? Where would they lead us if we would listen? Once again, I don't know the details, but I look forward to learning them as I get to know you. I look forward to listening to the hopes y'all have for the future of Willow Creek. I don't know yet what those hopes are, but I know that the young folks I have worked with these past few years in California as a pastor, and prior to that in Georgia, and many years ago in Austria as a teacher, the young people I've worked with keep telling me that they are paying a lot of attention to those who are crying out for justice. The young people I know are thirsty for the church to say something about the headlines of the day. They are hungry for the church to say something when they see suffering in the world. Their thirst and hunger for justice remind us of another timeless truth from today's psalm. God works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. This is a good promise from a good God and one that will mark our future together. There's more. There's more in the psalm and more in the promises of God for our future. In the original version of this sermon, I went verse by verse because this psalm captivated me with how powerful and encouraging it is as we look to the future together. But then I realized how long the sermon was. <laughs> And I didn't want to accidentally promise you long sermons for your future. So this is enough for today. We will have plenty more time together to keep exploring these promises and wondering what they are calling us into, calling us to grow into as individuals and as a church. For today, these are the things I know. 
that you have an incredible history of being a beacon in this community for 175 years. You have an incredible present of being creative and daring and flexible in your response to the particular peculiar needs of these last several months of pandemic. You have continued to bless the Lord through worship and through your care for one another and your neighbors. And we have an incredible future that God is calling us together into. I know it's incredible, not because of who I am, but because of who God is. It is a future based on the promises of scripture, summarized in today's Psalm. The promise of God's love, which makes us loving. The promise of God's forgiveness, which makes us forgiving. The promise of healing, the promise of redemption, the promise of renewal, the promise of justice, the promise of steadfast love and mercy, which invites us to offer mercy and love to others. And on and on and on. These promises for the future fill my heart with hope, and I hope for many years together to explore the glorious promises of our glorious God with you. Will you join your hearts with me in prayer? Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, may we remember your love, mercy, healing, renewal. May we remember all of your benefits. And may our souls sigh in comfort as we join our hearts together and say, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Amen. <laughs>